Hello guys, this is Vishan. So welcome to your channel, which is Sci Engineers. We have been making videos for the first year of engineering semester one subjects. So this is going to be the video related to your applied mathematics. We had earlier discussed about the partial derivatives, and we are going to continue so in this particular video. If you are new to the channel, please do go watch the other videos related to this, and also do subscribe to our channel to never miss any notification. To get the regular updates, you need to hit the bell icon, which is just beside the subscribe button. Also, do like the videos, do share it with your friends, and do comment in the comment section about how do you like the videos, and also let us know what are your views about the videos. So let's get going. So as we said that this topic is your partial derivatives, the topic is going to be your Euler's theorem, which comes under this. So before going to the Euler's theorem, we need to understand one basic definition, which is called as homogeneous function. So basically, homogeneous functions are nothing but that each and every term present in that function has to have the same degree. That is, the addition of all the variables degree should be same. Then in that case, we called those function as homogeneous. If the addition of all the degrees in the terms comes out to be same, let us say n, then it is called as homogeneous function of degree n. To get a clear idea, let us consider an example. So let us consider a function which is comprising of your x, y, and z, and let this function have the terms like x cube. Plus y cube, plus z cube, plus x square y, plus x z y, plus x y square. So what you can see is that in each and every term, the degree, the addition of the degrees of the variables which are present in each term is same. It is having three, three. In this, it's going to be two plus one. This is one plus one plus one, and this is one plus two, which all comes down to three. So basically, this particular function can be said as a homogeneous function. And since the addition of all the degrees is coming out to be three, it's a homogeneous function of degree three. Now, to calculate the degree of a function, because in this case it is quite simple. But to generalize it, what you need to do is you need to substitute your x terms with x t, your y terms with y t, and your z term with z t. So in this case, if you are getting the t common from all the terms, and you are getting the original function from this, let us see. So what you are doing is basically you are converting your small x y z to your capital x y z function, and when you substitute these values in this, you will be getting this as x cube t cube plus your y cube t cube plus your z cube t cube plus your x square. T square into y t plus your x t y t z t plus your x t y square t square. So basically, what you have done is you have considered your small x y z as capital x y z, and you have replaced the capital x with x t, capital y with y t. And capital Z with Z T. So on substitution, what you can see is that every term is having a T cube, which can be taken as common. And inside the bracket, you are getting this as X cube plus Y cube plus Z cube plus X square Y plus X Y Z plus X Y square. So from this, what you understand is you are getting the function as T cube into the original function. So when this occurs, that is, you are getting a T common outside, which is T raised to some value, 
and you are getting the original function inside the bracket then in that case you say that the function is homogeneous so if you are getting it as homogeneous then in that case the degree is represented by the degree of t so in this case you already know it's going to be of degree 3 so you are getting this as t cube so this is your degree of the homogeneous function let us take one more example in which the function is going to be non-homogeneous. So let us consider this particular function which is given to me. Then what you need to do is you need to represent it in terms of your capital X, Y and Z and replace your X with small xt, Y with yt and Z with zt. So after replacement you will be getting this as X, T, Y, T, Z, T plus this is going to be x square t square into y t into sin y t. So that's a bracket over there. Plus this is going to be 3 y cube t cube. So now what you can see is that you can take the t common from here. This is going to be t cube. This is going to be t cube and this is t cube also. So you are taking the t cube common and inside the terms you are getting as x y z plus x square y sin y t plus 3 y cube. Now what you can see is that it's not your original in function because you are having this y t which is present inside the sign and your original function was just sin y. So that is why you are not getting your original function even after taking the t cube. So this particular function is a non-homogeneous function. Then let's see what is this particular homogeneous function going to help me in finding the partial derivative terms. So we are going to see about our Euler's theorem what is basically it is talking about. So we are seeing the Euler's theorem. You have to understand that Euler's theorem is going to be divided into four different parts. We are going to see first the basic what the Euler's theorem states. So the basic Euler's theorem states that if my z is function of x and y, So basic Euler theorem states that if my z is a function of x and y and it is not just a function, it's a homogeneous function of degree n. So basically your z is also a homogeneous function of degree n. Then in that case you can use this particular identity which is x into del z by del x plus y into del z by del y will be equal to n into z where n is nothing but the homogeneous degree. This particular Euler's theorem can be extended to n number of variables like if you have your u which is function of x, y and z and u is also the u <coughs> and u is also the homogeneous function of x, y and z with degree n then in that case you can write your Euler's theorem as x into del u by del x plus y into del u by del y plus z into del u by del z which is equal to n into u. So you have to remember that whichever is going to be the function of the other variables that comes under the derivative part then the individual variables which are present you are going to take partial derivative with respect to those terms into the variable if the addition of all that is going to be <coughs> so the addition of all those terms is going to be equal to n into u where n is nothing but the degree of the homogeneous function and u is the original function which is your u is function of x y z so let us see a problem which is based on this particular theorem. So this is the question which is given to me in which they have given me u which is a function of x, y, z and they are asking me to prove that del u by del x, x into del u by del x plus y into del u by del y plus z into del u by del z is going to be equal to 0. So if you want to understand whether the question comes under Euler's theorem, you have to first of all see the terms which are involved in the proof part. 
you can see that it is the derivative of the function with respect to the variables which it is consisting of into the variable and addition of all such variables so you are seeing that it is derivative of x into x your derivative of y into y and derivative of z into z so it's addition of all these terms so most probably it's going to be the euler's theorem problem after that what you need to do is you need to check whether the function is going to be homogeneous or not you need to write the function as u capital u is going to be function of x y z so you need to redefine your x y z as capital x is equal to x into t capital y is small y into t and capital z is z into t so that's going to be cos of your small x t into y t plus y t into z t plus z t into x t divided by it's going to be x square t square plus y square t square plus z square t square so from this what you can see is that the t's are getting cut so you will be getting this as cos of x y plus y z plus z x divided by x square plus y square plus z square you can see that this is your original function so this is your small u of x y z but there is no t which is present but you can consider that as t raised to 0 because anything raised to 0 is going to be 1 so you can consider this as a homogeneous function of degree 0 so you are getting this thing as a homogeneous function so you can obviously apply your Euler's theorem in this case so according to the Euler's theorem this particular term is going to be equal to n into the function that is u in this case but in this case your n is basically the degree of homogeneous function which is 0 so you will be getting this as u into 0 which is nothing but 0 so you are getting the proof directly from this case so Euler's theorem is quite easy to solve you have to just check whether the function is going to be a homogeneous function or not if it is not a homogeneous function then in that case there are other methods in which you can solve it we will be seeing one more type of Euler's theorem which is going to be the extended version of the Euler's theorem so this particular theorem is going to be the extended version of Euler's theorem or it can be called as a corollary for the Euler's theorem in which you are having the terms like x square del square u by del x square so you are having the double derivative terms in this case plus you are having the double derivative term with respect to x y and the double derivative term with respect to y and you can see the coefficients of it it's x square in this case it is 2xy and this is y square if you are adding such terms together you will be getting this as n into n minus 1 into u where n is nothing but the homogeneous function of your function u so in this case also you need to prove that your u is a function which is going to be of x y in this case and it is also a homogeneous function of degree n if it is there then only this particular theorem or this particular statement can be used if not then this particular statement is not going to be valid for that case so let's see a problem which is related to this particular statement so this is a question which is given to me wherein you are given the u as this particular function and you have to prove that this thing is equal to 2 into u so you can again see that the function is the proof part is consisting of the double derivative terms with the corresponding variables like you are having the double derivative with respect to x so you are having the multiplication with x square you are having the double derivative term with xy so you are also having the term that is xy but it should be considered that you are taking it as 2xy you are having double derivative term with y then it is multiplied by y square 
So once you see something like this, then it should click in your mind that it is from most probably the Euler's theorem. And since it is having the double derivative term, it is going to be mostly your extended version of Euler's theorem or the corollary to the Euler's theorem. So before you go begin, then you have first you have to see the function. The function you have to prove whether it is going to be the homogeneous function or not. So you can see that this is a function which is given to you. So what you need to represent is your x, y, z in capitals. So after substituting the x, y, z that is your x square t square, your tan inverse of y t divided by x t plus your y square t square and sine inverse of y t by x t. So what you can see is that the t's inside the bracket of the inverse functions are getting cancelled. So there is no question of having a t over there. You can take the t square common from here. You are getting this as x square tan inverse y by x plus y square sine inverse y by x. So you can see that you are getting the original function. So it's going to be t square into u. So your n that is your order of the homogeneous function in this case is 2. So what you need to do is you need to find this particular value. So by your Euler's extended version the value is given by the formula which is n into n minus 1 into u. So in this case your n is 2 so just substituting the value. So this will be equal to 2u which was your 2 proof part. So in this particular topic they might be asking you to verify the Euler's theorem. So basically you have to verify the LHS part and the RHS part separately. Or they might be giving you some function and the 2 proof part which we just saw. Theorem's proof part is normally not asked but it is advisable for you to go through the proof part of it. If you want us to have the proof part for you then let us know in the comment section. In the next video we are going to continue with the Euler's theorem with having its third and the fourth version. So for that you can just stay tuned and do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification button to never miss a video from us. If you are new to the channel please do subscribe to our channel and please hit the like button and share it with your friends. So we are from Samartha Vidya classes which is for engineering and science students which is taking classes for the BE, BTech and diploma level students. We also conduct classes for the science students from the 11th and 12th PCMB and we also help students in their preparation for the entrances exam. We also conduct home private tuitions. So for more information on us, you can visit our Facebook page or you can contact us at samarthavidya at the rate gmail.com. Both the link for the Facebook page and the email is given in the description. So you can look it in the description below. So signing off for now. This is Sushant. So keep learning, keep watching and happy learning. Bye.